delivery. What you got? Coast Guard Emery. Out. Go. Get. Get. Oh, wow. Sorry about that, guys, and any Coast Guard people out there. Um, my name is Dave. Welcome to the Squirrel Hole. I'm Secret Squirrel123 on Twitter, and welcome to the Squirrel Hole, where we give you little bite-sized bite bits of information from Ukraine, Intel, and other things like that. All right, let's get right into it. First thing we're going to do is cover armbands. I'm sure you guys see a lot of uniforms. We covered the last uh, one of the last uh, episodes about uniforms, Russians stealing stuff from uh, us, like I don't know, uniforms, camouflage, toilets, washing machines. But so both sides actually wear the same uniforms. So to get away with, you know, not shooting your own people, they are using duct tape. Remember, it's not just for dates anymore. Okay, so. You got different colored duct tape. The Ukrainians are using blue, green, and yellow. And basically, whatever they're wearing for that day, for that unit, is the IFF, Identif Identification Friend or Foe, what they're using. So you'll see these different colors out there depending on what unit it is and what day it is, basically. The Russians are using white, silver, and red duct tape, and they're using this stuff, sewn, tied, glued velcro to their uniforms as a form of identification this is actually uh saint george's ribbon they used these during world war ii for some of the medals that were handed out to the uh, uh russians or to the soviets actually so they're trying to invoke the great patriotic war again and bring that back to the forefront all right so that's how you can tell russians versus ukrainians if they're Blue, green, or yellow, or Ukrainian, if they're this color, white, red, or silver, they're Russians. All right, moving on. Okay, so M1 versus M2. M1 is a tank using a 120 millimeter round, just like this. Okay, this is a tank, 120 millimeter round, 70 tons, goes about 70 miles an hour if you're really pushing it. It shoots this type of round right here. Okay, this is the 120 millimeter Sabo round. Everything from here at up will go out of the barrel or bur be burned up when they shoot it. The only thing that comes out of the barrel or the gun is the silver piece at the end. This here is the penetrator. This one's tungsten. It will go through anything on this planet. You can have two T-72s lined up. It'll go through both of them, okay? I've seen it. It's ugly. The range for these things is about three kilometers. And this thing will pass anything on the road except for a gas station. Horrible gas mileage, but that's what happens when you're hauling around 70 tons. The M2, on the other hand, is an armor personnel carrier or IFV. It's got tow system on the side, 25 millimeter gun on the front. It's got pretty good protection and will go pretty fast down the highway. It shoots the 25 millimeter main gun or main gun. This thing will go through a T-72. I've seen it in Iraq on the ranges. It'll woodpecker, what's called woodpecker, it'll hit a couple times, crack it, the armor, and go right through. The sides, the rear, and the less protected areas, it'll go right through. Not a problem. These things have a lot of power. Now, the Bradley, or as we talked about, the M1 has a range of about three kilometers for their main gun. The Bradley has a range of almost five kilometers. 4,750 unclassified. That's how far the tow will shoot. Um, and anything the tow hits goes away. Also, the newer versions of the tows don't even use the wire anymore. They are radio guided, so getting better all the time. Okay, Liberty Ukraine. Do I have to keep saying it? Liberty Ukraine is where your money needs to go if you have money or equipment or anything or time that you want to donate to Ukraine and you're here in the United States, they're a 501c3, started uh, operation in 2014. They're not a new system or not a new group. And uh, that's really, they're really uh, effective. They will get your money, your equipment right to the front. And they're out of Austin, which are, that's a good thing for some people. All right. Last episode, we talked about the Braves, the uh, uh, airborne BDB berets and how they went from 
maroon, or blue to maroon in Ukraine. Similar thing happened with the patches. Here's a typical VDV or airborne air assault patch. You've got words, numbers, helicopter, lightning bolts, clouds. There's a lot of stuff going on there. That's a typical Russian patch. A lot of stuff to tell a story. Usually a story about a loser, but there's a story going on there. All right. Now, Ukraine stopped doing that. They redesigned all their patches. That's a typical airborne patch now. Sort of reminds you of a screaming eagle. I have no idea where that came from. All right, so we're going to discuss the course of action on the map. Here's our map again, and this is what we got. We're going to talk about four courses of action over the next few episodes. Trust me, everything I say is an educated guess. I don't have any special information, and everything's unclassified. All I'm doing is wargaming this to show what could happen and what the uh, consequences could be. Again, I'm not in the room. This is unclassified. Any wargamer will tell you the same thing. All right, course action number one for the north. If, the, if Ukrainians attack along the north like they did earlier in Kharkiv, earlier uh, at the end of last year, they could actually run the border up here in the Luhansk area and come around to the city of Luhansk. That would actually cut off the first tank army and put them in a bad situation. We already know that they're operating at about 50 or 60 percent strength. A good solid push by 100,000 screaming mad Ukrainians would probably end their reign up here, put them in a bad situation, and so they'd get, be given a choice, either uh, surrender or pull back. That would take away all the flanking issues up here, and also the Russian army would have to reorientate itself for defending Luhansk. So that is one of the courses of action. I'm not saying which one I would do, but this one right here has some strengths, has some problems. If they don't get pushed through here enough, then they could get stalled, and uh, that could be a bad thing for the Ukrainians. But all in all, that is a course of action. All right. Thank you for your time. This is going to be it for this episode. Uh, keep, keep watching us. We're uh, starting to really get them out there, episode six right here. And as long as you guys keep sending questions, and by the way, that was a question that somebody sent me. As long as you guys keep sending me questions, I'll be answering them. And uh, as you can tell, I've got the uh, boom, or we got the bike now working on it. So thank you so much, and have a great day. Bye.